welcome back to my channel this is Dom and the postman's come again and look who it's from gripping beast let's have a look see what the postman has bought me this time so I pre-ordered the new saga book oh, look at this look at that the packaging malarkey Gripping Beast, thank you for your order. You're very welcome indeed. So first up, I got I got all four sets of dice. Now I was a little critical um, when I saw um, the price of these because these are like twelve pounds each, each pack, and there's four packs. So that's forty eight quid just in that alone. And then you add the rule book along alone, which is thirty quid. Yeah, 78 quid for this, uh, which is a lot of money. However, it was pointed out to me on a forum um, when I was sort of saying, crikey, that's a lot of money, that these dice can apparently be used. So there's, there's three books in this series of, of uh, related to ancient warfare. Um, so there's one on Hannibal, obviously there's a Punic one, and there's also a one from Eastern Mediterranean. Um, and apparently the dice can be used in all three. So that's a little bit more cost effective, I'm, um, so therefore I'm not quite so concerned about it. So what have we got here? These are, I think these are the um, Punic Stroke Carthaginian dice, I believe. Very nice they are too. These must be the Roman dice, yeah, definitely. These must be the Barbarian ones, I guess. Oh, are these... Oh, I don't know whether these are the Barbarians. Yeah, I think probably are. Hmm, so what are these? Oh, so these must be the Punic ones. Yeah, so these are the Punic ones. These are the Greek ones. Okay, that's the difference. Punics. So it's Punic and Carthaginian, which have the uh, palm trees, the trimarans, elephants, of course. And the Greek ones have the Greek hoplite helmets, uh, bits of uh, columns, Macedonian stars. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So that's the four sets of dice. So as I say, the beauty of that is they can be reused. And here's the rule book itself. And here we have it. Instantly recognisable. Very similar to all the other books. In it's plastic wrapping. Let's see if we can actually open this up. There is the book. Hardbacked. So Age of Hannibal. 218 BC, after having declared war on her rival Carthage, Carthage uh, on her rival Carthage, Rome watched the Carthaginian army cross the Alps under the command of Hannibal Bacca. So that basically sets the scene. It's a supplement that covers three Punic wars between Rome and Carthage that took place between 264 and 146 BC. The universe includes six factions um, with their own personalised battle boards. So here's the battle boards that, you that come with it. This is the Gauls. Uh, looks to be a very aggressive um, type of board. Uh, so you can melee, 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 orders, melee, activation, melee, melee, activation, activation, reaction. Um, some of them are really quite interesting. They seem to have some kind of special ability. These little talk symbols seem to give you something extra. So we'll have to look into the rules and see how, how they play out. But um, interesting ones here. Uh, I like the look of... Um, I like the Gallic Wave, uh, which is a spear and a horse. Choose one of your units, then up to two other friendly units within S of that unit, chosen, unit, chosen unit. Activate each of these units to charge, move or shoot. Each unit activated will take one 
uh, torque to add VS to their charge or distance move. So you could send three units in with one activation. That's pretty powerful. Interesting board. You've got the Carthaginian board, which is a bit more balanced. You've got orders, activation, reaction, melee, activation, shooting, melee or shooting reaction, melee, melee, melee or shooting reaction, and order reaction. So a much more balanced board. Um, some quite interesting things still here, uh, particularly if you're using things like um, citizen uh, troops and also what they call contingent troops. We'll have to look at the army list and see what they are. Contingent troops seem to be very, very powerful. Um, so I'm interested to see what they're going to be like. You've got the Numidians, uh, the horse horse warriors of some that renowned. Um, orders, activation, melee, activation, reaction, shooting, orders, activation, melee, activation, and melee. So quite an activation heavy unit. Uh, I quite like this one, trap. Choose an enemy unit and a friendly unit within M of each other. The enemy unit must activate for a move of S. Uh, it must approach your unit as much as possible. So that sort of simulates them being drawn on by the uh, Numidian uh, riders, which was a fairly common thing for them to do, which I like. Um, Hail of missiles, look at that one. Activate one of your units for an attacking, uh, shooting attack and get two bonus attack dice. If you inflict at least one casualty on the enemy unit, cancel all the casualties and inflict a fatigue on them instead. If you used uh, um, the head, whatever that is, um, and would have caused at least two casualties, inflict two fatigues as well. Wow. Nice. It's the boring old Romans. Uh, got orders, warriors on... F uh, orders, sorry. Orders, activation, shooting... Orders, melee, melee, activation, melee, orders, melee. So orders and melee seem to be the order of the day with this one. Uh, ten tenacious is a melee thing for them. If your unit is outnumbered by its opponents, gain two, a dice equal to the difference in figures between the two dice up to a maximum of four dice. That's very useful. Wow. So interesting things here. Quite like the look of the Romans. Not really, I'm just saying that. Iberian. Uh, so these are Spanish warriors. Generally pretty aggressive troops from what I remember from history. Uh, they have activation, activation, order reaction, activation, melee, activation, melee, melee or shooting, orders, activation. So very activation heavy on their board. And they have something called Gorilla Markers. So clearly there's some additional markers. Oh, here we go. Trigger. So Gorilla is a special ability. Um, trigger this ability after an enemy activation has been resolved. Discard two Gorilla Markers to activate one of our units, not mercenaries. Each unit can only be activated by Gorillas once per turn. Okay, so we'll have to find out how we get them. And these are the uh, the Greeks. So you've got uh, melee, melee, activation, melee, melee, activation, order, reaction, order, reaction, melee, melee. So very melee heavy, uh, very me melee centric uh, board here. Um, I like Legacy of the Ancestors, which is looks relatively easy to get. Uh, choose one of your non mercenary units. That unit gains Resilience 1 until the end of the turn, or Resilience 2 if you use the Macedonian um, Star, which is the rare, which is kind of nice. Also, I like this one, um, Polymus, which is a melee one. For each, each one uh, your opponent rolls on the attack dice, inflict an automatic hit on them. This ability cannot inflict more than three automatic hits. You'd have to be pretty unlucky to throw more than three ones, wouldn't you? But I've seen it done, done it myself, or more hits than there were figures in your unit if there's still less than three. Nice. Wall of Pikes. Cancel one casualty for each friendly unit with the phalanx rule within VS of your unit. So there you go, there's the army lists. Or the boards. Let's have a look into the book. So here we go, here's the book itself, 
Taking the cellophane wrapper off. That lovely smell of a new book. First, imi first uh, image is the iconic elephants going up against the Romans. Fantastic, look at that brilliant picture. So as, as anticipated, the uh, Carthaginians, Romans, uh, Gallics, Greeks, Iberians, Numidians and mercenaries. And then the intriguing epic saga in this book. High quality book as you would expect from Saga. I'm not going to go into all the rules because, yeah, it'll take time to, to digest these. But um, here you go. There's the nest, there's the dice. Eastern dice. So they call them Eastern dice, Roman dice, Barbarian dice, and Helic uh, dice. And they suggest the difficulty. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know whether they've had that before in the book. Difficulty levels. So Carthaginians rate two. So the Gallics. So the Numidians. And the Greeks and the Romans are ones, and the Iberians are threes, so they're rated to be the most difficult to play, uh, which is interesting. A good thing for the newer players, I guess. Um, you've got rules on elephants, I know most people are going to be really excited by elephants. Um, recruiting an elephant costs one saga point and counts as a unit of 12 when count levies when counting counting uh, victory points an elephant l activates like a unit of warriors and when recruiting your warband you cannot spend more than half your saga points on recruiting elephants elephant uh, form uh, elephants units compose of one to two figures um, they have one saga dice five stroke uh, brackets four armor five brackets two aggression and composite bows. They have animal terror, mad with pain, massive uh, presence, resilience to shooting and tramping. Uh, yeah, trampling, trampling even. So what does that mean? Massive means uh, an elephant counts as an infantry unit. Its first move or charge activation each turn is made with a movement distance of M but all activations after the first in that turn made with a, an S, so they slow down basically. Elephants cannot close rank or, or benefit from any cover whatsoever. Well, yeah, sounds logical. Uh, trampling. Each elephant is a terrifying opponent. When it is in melee combat, the elephant automatically gets two hits. Oh, so, sorry, automatically adds two hits um, that are scored by its attack dice or four automatic if their opponent closes ranks or has the mount rule wow so if you hit anything you get two extra on top mad with pain if an elephant is removed as a casualty following a shooting activation every unit friend or foe within s of the elephant must roll a dice on a roll of five or six the the unit suffers a casualty so that sort of simulates the elephants basically um running from there uh, tormentors and smashing through friendly ranks which did happen a lot in fact I think a lot of the howder men carried sort of mallets with a big spike so if the elephants did ever lose control they could basically um, terminate them immediately shooting the warriors who ride elephants had a variety of ranged elephant ele ranged weapons like javelins or short bows elephants uh, count as being armed with composite bows but given the animal's mass and the protection offered by the howder, the reduction in armor the weapon usually brings does not apply. Animal terror units with the mount rule suffers a minus one penalty to their attack dice when they engage in melee against elephants. And that's because most cavalry, most horses, were terrified of elephants. So they've got new equipment wise, they've got the sarissa, which is the pike used by infantry. A unit equipped with a Sarissa reduces uh, its movement distance to S, but its charge distance remains M. Sarissas grant the following two benefits to a unit carrying them, which is not in uneven terrain. Once per turn after a move activation uh, is resolved during the uh, owner's turn, a unit equipped with Sarissas can be activated for free for, for a shooting action within a range of S. 
this generates no fatigue. Note that except for the purposes of this special activation, a Sarissa does not count as a ranged weapon and a unit equipped with Sarissas cannot be activated for shooting. So I'm guessing that's to sort of simulate that sort of thrust that the pike would have had as it sort of came in, because um, it obviously didn't shoot. So it must be just to sort of simulate that effect. Uh, while it has no fatigue, a unit equipped with Sarissas get plus one bonus to its attack dice in a melee against the figures that are elephants uh, or which have mounted rule. So chariots are another new feature. Uh, Gallic nobles often rode to war in chariots. Um, so basically it's an equipment option available to hearth guards and warriors in the Gallic army. Um, you basically use a, a chariot model to replace two hearth guard figures. So, so basically a unit of uh, four hearth guard would be two chariots. Um, they grant the following benefits, an increase in melee aggression by two and shooting aggression by one, which is pretty pokey. Hearth guard in chariots, therefore an aggression of four in melee and two in shooting. It grants the unit the mount horse rule, but doesn't reduce their armor against shooting attacks, which is kind of useful. They gain the Presence and Resilience 1 special rule. The unit gains an une um, the unit counts uneven and dangerous terrain as impassable, uh, which is understandable, I guess. If you choose to put your Warlord on it, on a chariot, they gain the mounted uh, rule um, without the armor penalty associated normally with that rule. They also get the uneven and dangerous ground, making it impossible. Uh, their other characteristics do are not modified and they don't get any changes to shooting or aggression. Uh, war pigs, <laughs> that makes me laugh. My first sort of club, inverted commas, as my mates, we called them the flaming pigs because this was a tactic used by the uh, Romans against uh, Pyrrhus's uh, elephants in one of the wars they had where they um, got hold of her because they realised the, the high-pitched sound of a pig in pain uh, scared elephants so they collected up uh, pigs they put pitch uh, and oil on the back of them set fire to them and tried to point them at the elephants to try and scare them away <laughs> so they go which is pretty horrific but i guess also at the end of the game you get a whole load of pork crackling afterwards which is kind of useful uh, any unit any war band can recruit a unit of war pigs for one point they are a unit of mercenary levy, but composed of one pig keeper and, pi and eight pigs. They have the following characteristics. Zero saga dice, three armor, uh, one aggression, and they're unarmed. They have pigs run wild and all-terrain capability. So the pigs run wild once per turn. This unit can be activated for free for a shooting attack that generates no fatigue. To do so... Move two figures, two pig figures from your unit and choose an enemy unit within M. Resolve a shooting attack against this unit, but roll no attack dice. You inflict one automatic hit if it's an infantry unit, two if it's a mounted unit, and three if it's a unit of elephants. The enemy unit also suffers a fatigue after the shooting attack is resolved. Wow, that's pretty pokey. So you could move forward and then with the free activation, shoot activation, basically unleash the pigs. Unleash the pigs. Uh, all terrain, this unit's uh, movement is never reduced by uneven terrain. It does suffer the normal penalties for dangerous terrain. Um, and that can never, and it can never charge. So it's quite a cost though, one point, so you lose a saga dice basically, but you get something that can pretty much automatically inflict damage. I'm not sure there's much um, historical precedent for unleashing flaming pigs at infantry or cavalry, but as I say, certainly there was against elephants. So then you've got ruses. Okay. So this is a new rule as well called ruses, um, which is basically sort of... Uh, kind of set the scene for the sort of ancient period so they suggest that you should only you shouldn't use these when you're playing book of battles uh, games because it un, unbalances them somewhat um, so choose your ruses first of all you must generate your ruse points each 
player gets a ruse point equal to the points value of their warband, you can spend this sum to acquire ruses during the creation of your warband, keeping in mind that there's no limit to the number of ruses you can acquire as long as you don't spend more points than you've been given. Uh, the cost of each ruse is indicated on, on each card by one to three coins at the bottom of the card. You can only buy one ruse point once, it's entirely impossible for each opponent to buy one or more identical runes, uh, ruses. There's two main types of ruses, generic ones, used by everyone, and unique ruses, which belong to the faction and bear the corresponding symbol on their cards. You can download them from the uh, Tomahawk website, because I was thinking that. I don't get them with the, um, didn't get them with the brawls, so there you go. There's four types of ruses each that can be used in particular circumstances or situation. Each ruse type is indicated uh, by its card, uh, card's background colour and the cost of each ruse is indicated by the number of uh, symbols on the card. So you have recruitment, uh, allows you to bring new troops into your warband representing a theme or a particular army within the faction. The effect is detailed on each card. You can only have a single Rec recruitment ruse and they can't be mixed uh, in the search of an unbeatable combination uh, okay preparation uh, allows you to represent the ingenious plan that your warlord hopes to deploy in order to cut the unlucky unluck enemy war uh, warlord into pieces uh, they affect train placement deployment and or the first turn of the game each uh, some preparation cards are played at the same point during the train placement or during deployment phases. Um, players alternate to playing their cards during each step. The first player reveals the abilities of one of their preparation ruses first. Uh, you may have as many of these cards as you wish. There's also a veteran one, uh, which represents some of your best units. Veterans represent some of your best units. They allow you to personalize your army by giving them some special ability. When your warband is deployed, you must uh, assign each card to one unit. Some cards are limited to one troop type or units with certain equipment. This is noted in their description. Otherwise, uh, you cannot ass assign a veteran card to a unit with the mercenary rule. Um, You can have as many of those veteran cards as you like. Then the stratagem ruse um, used during the game at the start of the first turn. Each one specifies when it cannot be used. Once uh, the effect is realized, discard it. You cannot use that ruse again. More beautiful pictures. Do want to know what they're like until we see the ruse cards. And I can't see them anywhere, so I'm a bit surprised by that. It's a bit disappointing. You have to go to the website to pick them up. Which is a little bit frustrating. I wish they were here with the nicely done. So they're going to be paper, which is a bit frustrating. You've got the Carthaginians here. This is the army faction for the Carthaginians. Beautiful painted pictures here. Uh, you got the Hearth Guard, which are the uh, sacred band or veteran troops from Carthage's uh, colonies. You've got the regular troops, which are the warriors, um, which can be from all over the place. And you've got the levy. They have the ability to recruit uh, horse warlords, horse Hearth Guard, or dismounted Hearth Guard, uh, elephants, heavy chariots. Um, heavy chariots have impact, mount, presence and resilience one but you can only have one unit of them which is interesting you can have a contingent uh, which is warriors which again can be mounted or dismounted and you can have levies that are javelin, bow or sling armed you've got um, legendary units, you've got uh, Hannibal himself uh, who is two saga dice on his own you can replace your warlord for one point he has the following characteristics two saga dice five armor and four for being shot at aggression five he comes with a horse he has bodyguards determination pres uh, presence resilience one and we obey um, he can use his we obey rule within the range of uh, with a range of m 
when he uses the advanced ability student of Eximus, uh, he increases the bonus provided to three dice instead of two. He's not subject to pride. He can uh, can use any saga dice to use the blood price advanced ability. Um, at the start of the order phase, he can choose a unit mercenaries within M of him and afflict a fatigue on. Uh, Oh, okay, so basically you can take charge of an enemy mercenary unit within M of him. Uh, you put a fatigue on Hannibal himself, but for, until the start of the next turn, uh, his, this unit counts as being part of your faction and therefore can be targeted uh, by the advanced, act, uh, advanced abilities on your board. Uh, it counts as a contingent unit when determining the effect of the ability. That's pretty good. You've also got um, you've got Hannibal Basca, oh, sorry, um, Hamilcar uh, Barcia, who was um, his less illustrious uh, son. So you've got him as a ledger in the unit, which is kind of fun. There's the board activities. Uh, here's some of the ruses that specialist for. Um, Carthage. Interesting. These are going to take a little bit of reading up on, see what they're, see what they're worth. There's the Roman list. So they have a special rule of maniples. They have tribunes. So your main warlord is a, a consul, but you can also have a tribune if you wanted. Hearthguard warriors and levy. They have a legendary. Uh, a leader as in which is um, Scorpio who is an exceptional consul gets basically a, a longer Weir Bay range uh, he knows enemy tricks All right other special unit is Marcus uh, Marsilius um, as a special commander special consul uh, he replaces your warlord for free as uh, pride and determination, all sorts of good stuff. Lovely jubbly. There's the abilities. Here's their special cards. Uh, you've got penal le legions if you want. Uh, this is the special rudes, unique ones for the Romans. Uh, your warband can contain one point of hearth guard. Your warriors can't be mounted. Your levies can choose to have no equipment options, but must but can be considered manables, and then you ignore the Roman specific f f um, faction restrictions on warband recruitment. So basically, a mass of cheap uh, levy troops. Uh, you've got flaming pigs. There we go. Various other special, unique ruses you can put into your army. Is the Gallic Warriors now they do so the the the, the talk thing I saw earlier, it's uh, fervor sounds like infamy doesn't it? Famous for being great warriors, their martial abilities were equal only to their ferocity in combat. It's no lie to say that they were certainly the best individual swordsmen of antiquity. Even the Romans considered a, a vanquishing a Gallic warrior in single uh, combat to be a great feat. And we know how highly the Romans, <laughs> how highly the Romans' opinion themselves was. Yeah, too right. Uh, when a Gallic warband went to war against a common enemy, the uh, various warbands that comprised it competed with each other to perform feats of prowess and courage uh, to impress themselves and their enemies. Um, so several advanced. Saga abilities on the Gallic board include the torque symbol in their ability description. This symbol represents fervor, a mechanic unique to the Gauls. When you trigger an advanced ability, you can choose whether to trigger its fervor effect. This affects uh, this is the effect that follows the symbol. This is completely optional, and you can resolve the saga ability without using the fervor. Um, you can choose to trigger a fervor effect. Place one fervor marker next to the unit for each symbol representing the cost of the effect. 
Note, however, no unit can have more than three further markers. For example, it's impossible to use a further effect costing two if you've already used one that used two. So how do you get further? Levies can't get further. Doesn't actually tell me how you get further. So I'm missing something. Okay, so you can't have more further markers than your unit has figures. No, that doesn't matter. Doesn't tell me how many further markers you can get. Hmm. Oh well, let's move on. I'm sure it'll become clear. Uh, they have warriors, uh, hearth guard. Uh, can be horse or chariot based. Uh, you have warriors who can be horse based, or you and they have levies that have javelin or bows. They have a couple of special uh, leaders. You have uh, Decorus and Viridamius as two special, and you have a special army unit, the Galastai units. Uh, oh, okay. So this is the Galastai units. So the the uh, you can have a particular Gallic. Um, tribe that were renowned for their um, serious aggression um, basically have we scorn death uh, the Galastai are famous for having fought totally na naked um, but suffered terrible defeat at the hands of the Roman warriors entirely nude and equipped only with the weapons and shields their armor against shooting is only three however they ignore all movement penalties from uneven terrain so <coughs> excuse me so you'd have to maximize the woods and things for them to operate effectively and it still doesn't tell you how you get your further but there you go there's some of the special uh, rules fanatics this unit will increase the number of further markers it can receive by one to a total of four um, that's one of those their unique attributes these are the Greeks they have warlords and hearthguard on horseback they have elephants they have warriors with pike and they have levies with uh, slings or bows or javelins. There's a Syracuse version of that, which basically doesn't have the elephants. Uh, and the warriors don't have um, pike, but they do have phalanx rule. You've got the uh, uh, basically the Greek. Um, empires, colonies, which have a slightly different army again, they can have one unit of phalanx as hearthguard this time, um, and their warriors are mounted or javelin men. Special units, uh, you've got uh, Pyrrhus, and you've got Hydron. Again, some of their special unique ruses. Hypacipus. It says phalanx units only use this card when one of your units decides to close ranks. Your opponent must discard as many attack dice as you discard, discard in order to close ranks. Useful. Very useful. Iberians, Spanish warriors basically. They have uh, warriors and hearth guard that can be on uh, the hearth guard have to be mounted, the warrior can be on foot. And they have warriors who are either foot, uh, horse and or can have slings, that's interesting. So you can have slingers as your warriors and they can have levy who are javelin men, another special leader, another special leader, there's their unique ruses, then there's Numidians, Numidians can have uh, warlord elephants rather than um, Hearth guard, so they don't get hearth guard the Numidians. They get uh, the warrior elephants then uh, and levy um, rather than them. There's a couple of uh, special units uh, which are special generals, uh, which are kind of cool. There's their special ruses. Withdraw mounted unit only. This card can be used after an enemy unit has activated for a charge or a shooting attack but before it's resolved activate your unit targeted by the charge or shooting for a move. 
So basically, you can you can move your troops away. Is basically how that one works. Look at lovely pictures. Really, really nice. Here's uh, merc um, yeah, mercenaries. So you've got Cretan archers, Tarentine cavalry, Balearic slingers, mercenary hoplites, Ligurians, Pisiloi, Samnites, and Thessalopi uh, as your extra possible troops. I'm not going to go through every one of these. And then we're on to Saga Epic. Now, this was the one that interested me most. Uh, because most Saga games are, are designed for six points, but Saga A Epic allows you to play uh, bigger battles of 12 to 18 points uh, with one player aside or up to you know multiple players. So you could play three players aside, each taking individual command of six, um, which would be quite interesting. Um, it's composed of three warbands. Each bought with between three and eight points. So you, if you went for three with a minimum, that'd be three, six, nine points, which isn't that much. Or you could go to eight, sixteen, twenty-four points on the table. That's pretty immense. Um, each warband can belong to a different faction, but it's compulsory for at least half of your points to be spent on a single faction. Points that a warband spends on mercenaries counts as being spent by on their own faction. For example, a 12 point game, at least 6 points must be spent on the same faction. Counted in the 6 points are mercenaries re uh, recruited by the warbands belonging to the major faction. So, I don't know, say you were a Greek and you chose to take um, five, unit, 5 points worth of uh, Greek hoplites. Uh, you could then take some Balearic Slingers, which would be mercenary, and that would keep you within your six points of the twelve, and then the other six points could come from all sorts of different armies if you want. Each warband must follow their faction's recruitment restrictions. Um, in epic battles, it's better to leave heroes and legendary units out, um, and mercenaries are allowed with the usual constraints and limitations. So basically, one unit of mercenaries can only be can be recruited by one army. So it's not possible to get two units of Balearic slingers. That would be a little strong. Uh, when recruiting your army, you must designate one of the three warbands as belonging to the army's warlord. Uh, it can be any one of those. So basically, he becomes a nominated leader. Uh, the army's other two warbands have a, a commander instead of a warlord. Commander is a hero who replaces the warbat warlord but has the same equipment and options. They have the following characteristics one saga dice, five armor, four aggression. Um, they have bodyguard, determination, presence, resilience one, and we obey. Um, they count as being warlords for all game effects. Um, in fact, they can be seen as minor. Oops, oops, can be seen as minor warlords. No matter the size, a game of Epic is played on a 180 centimeter by 90 centimeter table. Each army is allocated one of the table edges of their starting table edge. I won't go through all the details of these because it's pointless. So there's rules on how to deploy your scenery because obviously it's a bigger battle. Um, starting with the army with the initiative, each army must deploy their warlord placed within L of their table edge. Okay, so deployment, I won't go into details here, but one of the interesting things is about markers. So each army uh, receives three markers numbered one to six. The side with the initiative receives the even numbers, two, four, and six. The other army gets the odd numbers, one, three, and five. Uh, ideally, there should be, uh, should be a marker noting each of the warband's number next to the leader or in their area of play. The start of, of the start of the round, the warlord of each army takes their three numbered markers and secretly assigns each one to an enemy warband. Um, so placing it face down next to the warband's warlord or commander. If the enemy warband has eliminated the enemy uh, player, will have one less marker to hand out. They can choose which markers they don't want to assign. 
Once war bands, uh, warlords have assigned their markers, the markers are revealed. The numbers indicate the order of play. So the warband with marker 1 plays their turn first, followed by warband with marker 2. Ah, OK, so this is a way of getting priority. At the end of the round, each warlord takes back their markers um, and assigns them again the following turn. This process continues until the end of the game. Uh, which comes when one or two, one of the two armies routes, or eight rounds have been done. During the first round of the game, each warband must play their turn with two Saga dice, the others are out of play. During the second round, each warband must play the turn with four, so you have a maximum of four dice for your command. So if you choose to take the same faction, so say you've got uh, an army with two Carthaginian and one Numidian faction, the Carthaginians can share their dice. So they only get four dice each and they can share them on the board, which is quite a useful attribute. Whereas the Numidian command would only have his four dice and could only use those four dice. Um, Some additional inspiration abilities. And there we go, that appears to be it. A load of gripping beast pictures, which are rather nice. And that's the book. So there you go. Apart from being a little bit disappointing that those counters uh, aren't in the book, and they don't seem to have done a very good job of explaining, well at least for me on the first read through, how these ruses and things get applied. Um, it does look an interesting book and I will look forward to having a play of it. Uh, obviously this is just my first look through, so um, we'll see what see what it's like, but um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. It's nice to get the... I like Saga, it gives me a headache playing it, um, but I like it and I'm going to look forward to having a go with this period because I do like my hoplites and my um, pikemen and what have you and my heavy cavalry and so forth so I'm going to look forward to uh, trashing a few Roman armies um, in the next few weeks and months hopefully as this uh, as we start to play this and as other people get all the rules and we actually find out what the hell we're doing it's always slightly intimidating with a new set of rules isn't it anyway there you go that's a quick flick through one a relatively quick flick through of the rules uh, picking out a few things that caught my eye um, let me know in the comments down below whether you're excited about this, whether you're not. I know talking from Martin, Seventh Son, um, he initially was excited and then he thought, oh, I'm not sure I really want, uh, not, not that excited by it. So um, I think a few of us are sort of thinking, crikey, um, Saga works quite well as a small army. Uh, this is going to be quite a big army. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below and uh, stay well, stay safe and I will see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out. Mm -hmm.